Today I would like to give you a little testimony about my life here in Medjugorje. I came the 23rd of August 2021. I'm already here now, you can imagine, six months. And um, what a ride it has been, you know. First of all, how did I come to Medjugorje? I was seeing a website on the internet called the School of the Holy Spirit, which is in the south of France by Father Coelho. And I found it because I did my civil service, my social service in the south of France in 1991, 1992, in that, um, under that bishop, Toulon, Fréjus. And I checked, like, you know, all these years later, what are they doing? And one night in Spain, where I was living before, I found this website and I have a friend on Facebook. I don't even know why I sent it to her. I sent to her, look at this, I found this website like walking in the Holy Spirit. And she said, this is crazy. How did you find that? And I said, just coincidence. And she said, this priest is my spiritual guide and I'm going to be with him in Medjugorje, end of August 2021. And I have this strong feeling that you are going to be there too. And this thought kept in my heart somehow because this, this woman is a charismatic woman and, and um, she studies like walking in the Holy Spirit, listening to the Holy Spirit. And um, so I kept this thought, maybe there's something, something right, you know, that I should be in Medjugorje. And like the last week before the last week of August, two clients paid a larger sum of money. And I knew in my heart that like not this friend of mine called me to go to Medjugorje, but Our Lady called me. It was a deep feeling. I was with a French friend having a coffee. And um, I nearly cried because I felt her call in my heart, you know. And Thursday I got the money. Friday I bought the ticket. Monday I left and I came to Medjugorje. And um, yeah, I was filming here in Medjugorje because I'm a YouTuber, as you see my YouTube channel. And like the last day bef uh, before leaving, I went up to Operation Hill filming. It was the last thing I had to film because I filmed everything here in Medjugorje. Walking tours, Medjugorje, you know, day and night, when, uh, afternoon, Krishavats, the cross mountain. And Operation Hill for, was missing. And I did that the last day before leaving. And going up and being in front of Our Lady, I was like, I started to cry, you know, I, I, I started to cry. I, I, I was shocked, literally shocked. I started to cry and I felt that I could connect to her pain. I felt her pain. She had under the cross with her son. I felt her humility, your, her, yeah, just the humility. And that made me like, like that I could connect with all my life story, which I have, which I will tell you a little bit about. Um, where to start, you know, when I, when I was in my mother's room, my mother had depression, they built a big house, and I think in that mother's room I felt the spirit of rejection, you know, because, oh, this is a burden, being pregnant, building this huge house, and, um, yeah, you also have to know my mother and my father, they worked in Africa, and when they came from Africa, my mother had a huge depression, adopting again into a Western society after living three years in Madagascar, which is a completely different society. And um, like one day, we are, my mother walked me to the kindergarten and, you know, we passed the cemetery and my mother leaves me on the sideway of the, of the, um, of the street and she goes into the, literally into the, the cemetery and says like, leaving me, I want to die, I want to go into a tomb. Fortunately, friends came by and, and they took us in, in a house, you know. But, you know, this leaves a profound shock in me. What I see now, then we come to the fasting, you know. I did a 40-day fasting with Father Claudio Babut from Mission Ruach. And then all these things come out. Um, I could tell you, stayed away from the, from the fast fasting, the effect of all this. Also, like, my mother was then in psychiatry. And I, um, there was a lady taking care of our household and of me, of my brother and my sister, and make, cooking the food, taking us to kindergarten, school, my brother. And one time, she takes me from the kindergarten, we pull out of the parking lot of the kindergarten, 
onto the street and the car hits straight in the back where I was sitting. And you can imagine as a little boy, I was totally in shock. This lady was new, I didn't know her, my mother was gone and I was alone in the back of that car. You can imagine how, what a shock this was for me, you know. So we fast forward now to the, to the fast fasting. And you know, the 40 days of fasting, you have a lot of um, um, like illumination of conscience. I come to that later, but I want to tell you the effect of this thing of these events that happened, which I just talked about, was like when Father Claudio um, told me I should do the St. Paul fasting at the end of the fasting. The last three days, I did that, and he said, Jesus is going to reveal your name, and you have to forgive that person, and ask for forgiveness. And I was shocked, literally, I thought I had forgiven my mother, but it was my mother, you know, I, it was my mother. I. In doing that St. Paul fasting, it came up that that I, I felt like deep from deep down inside, I felt like mother, you, mommy or mother, you wrecked my life. You li literally wrecked my life, and I couldn't physically. He said, I, "You have to write a letter to the person," and I physically couldn't write that letter. During that time in Medjugorje, like that's the magic or that's the divine providence here in Medjugorje, there was a lady from Colombia, 38 years old. And she told me her story during the, the St. Paul fast. She said, like, you know, I was nine or seven or nine years old and I take, took care of my mother who was an alcoholic and a drug addict. And this lady was so much in peace. And I went up to her when I couldn't write that, literally couldn't write that letter and ask, like, in adoration, I was crying. I said, like, how, how can you be in peace? How, did you, how could you forgive? And she said, I did a lot of, lot of adoration. And... how to say like um, she did block me I, 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 I could write a letter I did write a letter and Father Claudio said this is a long process because these are deep rooted wounds and he explained to me you always ask your mother in heaven to give you a blessing you bless her and you always when the blockage comes up you say like um, I bless you bless me mother or mommy and I forgive for myself for hating you all this year or not forgiving you all this year. It's better to explain it like this. And how could I say also like um, to tell you the full story, what happens after this, you know, you, 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 um, you, you know, you have this, you build this wall around you, you know. That's why I cried on, 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 on Apparition Hill up there in front of Our Lady because I had built a huge wall around my heart that nobody ever will hurt me like what happened in my childhood, you know. And with Our Lady I felt her pain so I laid my weapons down, the wall started to crumble, crumble, crumble you say in English. And it's a long process. I'm here since six months now in Medjugorje and it's a long, long process of healing. And one part of that healing is the fasting with Father Claudio, which came up on the first fast came up the spirit of rejection, spirit of inferior complex, spirit of insecurity. All the spirits came up, you know, the illumination of consciousness, Father Claudio said when, when you're doing the fasting. And I went to a priest, there was a super priest by coincidence, and he said, you know, these spirits, these spirits are not you. The identity in Christ is that you are a beloved child of God. You don't have fear. You are loved. You are not rejected. You, don't, you, you are a prince of the Most High. You know, you have a value. And that was a little puzzle as well in, 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 in this healing process. Also what happened in this healing process, you know, I couldn't talk publicly, you know. I start st I stopped studying at university when I had to give my first talk in public because I had total fear talking in public of public humiliation. Where does that come from? From being left alone on the street in front of the cemetery, you know? You have this humiliation and it's, it's deep rooted inside. And you can, I can, I want to give you like really hope with this testimony. You see, like I'm 50 years old now. After the first fasting, this 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 hum this feeling of humiliation, of public humiliation, stopped. I can give now testimonies for Father Claudio in groups about my 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 fasting. 
And uh, when I have fear, I say, through Christ, I speak for Christ, and my, Christ is my strength. Through Christ, I get my strength, as it is written in the Bible. And, you know, that's a positive effect of the fasting. But as Father Claudio said, it's a very tough, tough um, process because it's deep rooted. So I do my second fasting now. And it's again, it's a healing process in the second fasting. In the second fasting, it came out like this huge mistrust against women, you know? Like, like I was on Apparition Hill with a friend of mine and I was looking at Our Lady and like, like two women were whispering behind me and I said, wow, this is my friend, she's whispering again, I can't trust the woman, the woman is whispering behind me, you see, and my mother let me alone. What, what, what does the devil put into your heart? You can't trust woman, you know? But I looked around and it was not my friend who was whispering, she was far away. Some other people, you know, the devil puts, is a liar, he puts lies in your, in your mind and it's not the truth. From the beginning he's just a liar, you know, and he wants to destroy everything, good relationships, good friendships, everything he wants to destroy. And so that came up very strongly in the second fast. In the second fast very strongly came up, I also had a spirit of control. Our, my father, after this happened to my mother, as, as a human reaction said, I want to control everything now, that this thing doesn't happen at him anymore, like at the, at the graveyard or the cemetery. So he always said, trust is good, control is better. But this is totally contrary to the lifestyle of God, which God wants trust in him, that we have faith in him, and that he provides us with what we need. And that's what I thought. I want. I, I had the spirit of rationalism. I tried to figure out everything and control everything. You can't control nothing in life. And that spirit came up in the second fast very, very much as well. Also in, in the first fast already, in the first step came up, because I'm thinking a lot, you know, control spirits, rationalism, figuring things out. Jesus told me in the first fast, pray, Jesus, think in me. I do that all the time now when I'm overthinking, scared and fears. I say, Jesus, pray and think in me. What happens? I have feels, feelings of love inside of me, not any more of, mi uh, any more of mistrust. And that was the first step. And the second, now it's coming up again, like this spirit of control. And I see I can let it, let it in another step deeperly go. I don't know how many fasts I need, I will need for that stuff, but, but it's happening. So I would like to give you like a lot of, lot of hope that sometimes it takes a long time. I was traveling the world, I lived in Israel, I was in India, I traveled, I was in America, I was an actor. I tried everything, I was new age, all that stuff, you know. That has an effect as well, I want to tell you. Never do you new age, you know. I went to psychics to tell the future. Afterwards, I was totally confused. Why did I go to psychics? You know, I didn't have the father blessing. My father was so occupied with life that he couldn't give us the blessing. And what does it mean? Why is the blessing of the Father so important? And when the Father says, Son, you can do it. You can take decisions. You know, he never said, you can do it. So I went to a psychic so that the psychic tells me what decision should I take, like a fortune teller, you know. And, um, but this effect had, I was totally confused afterwards. It sounds good, it gives you a guide, but how, where does the, the, the fortune teller, this, this, this Chitano lady gets her, uh, uh, the, the, the message from, you know. So um, I only can warn you to do that thing, and th these things of, of new age, it will lead you into confusion. You won't be happy, you, won't, you have to be grounded in Christ, as a friend said. You have to be guided by the Holy Spirit. It's that little voice who guides you. You, will, you have to study it, you will hear it in your heart. It's enthusiasm, you can characterize it with enthusiasm that you're, you want to do that thing. And um, you have, then when you do that thing, you are, you are authentic, you are real. And um, that's more and more what I'm becoming here in Majigoya, authentic and real, you know. Another thing what is coming up now in the second fast as well. Our father, like my, my biological father, he said like, you have to be perfect now. After what happened to my mother, we are the perfect family. And perfectionism is neither from God. We are allowed to do mistakes. We, why do we have the sacrament of confession? Because we have like... Um, how to say, we, we fall, God knows it, that's why I instituted all this, all, all these sacraments, like this sacrament on, of, on confession. Also I would like to tell you, when you don't get this love from your father and mother, you have this huge vow and you want to, 
to fill this lack of love is something. So I, for years, wrote sexually with women online, you know, to fill this void, void, to forget, you know, to just be in the moment. But how is the devil? He gives you this nice pleasure at the moment, but at the end you are totally like, like, like numb. I felt like spiritually numb. I felt like no energy, no self-esteem. And this, this healing is starting here as well, you know, it's, it's, it's like like a fluster, how do you say, a bandage you want to put on, 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 on the wound, as Father Claudio told me, but this, this bandage doesn't help because our, you have to get to the root of the wound where Our Lady leads you here in Medjugorje. When you are here, you will see, when you are longer, long, longer time here in Medjugorje, you will see that she's always bringing you to the hour moments. She leads you to the wounds because she wants to heal the wounds, but he, she gives you as... When you get to the round, like this lady from Colombia who told me about her life story, or other people like Father Claudio and other people of Father Claudio who helped me on the way to 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 overcome this round and to let this heal the round start healing, and um, that's what's happening here in Medjugorje with me right now. And I really, really want to give you hope. You know, I'm 50. You know, Sarah and Abraham, they got the child very late in their life. You know, you have to have patience. In God's timing, everything will happen. And I also want to tell, you know, like, um, you have to let the Divine Symphony play out in front of you. That's what, at the end, I want to tell you where I'm right now in the fasting that I get much more calm before I try to, to force life to do what I want to do or people to do what I do. It doesn't work like that. You have to trust in God and let the divine say to God, I give my life to you, fill me with your divine will, guide me Holy Spirit every second of a day. That's what I pray, a simple prayer in the morning. Mary, take my hand. Jesus, take my hand. Guide me every second of the day in the divine will with your Holy Spirit. And then you get calm after the second fasting. I get much more calmer now, and I can let let the divine symphony play in front of me out. You know, I still fall sometimes back when you're tired, or you know. But try to do that. Ask what I ask God now is only fill me with your love. Let me be humble. Let me be still. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. It sounds simple but it's the solution to everything then i get more relaxed you know i didn't get confirmation of my father and i was like literally like like insecure fearful i couldn't do anything i you know in my life but now i, I feel that i'm getting into my vocation and that that i'm finally finally getting the thomas which who i should be in christ and in god by being guided by the Holy Spirit and letting letting the, the divine symphony being played out in front of you, just as it's written in the in the Psalms, "Be still, I am God," or the one who is patient will receive the kingdom. So, so I wish you I, that I can give you hope and joy with this testimony, and, and that um, this testimony is going to inspire you. And and um, come to Medjugorje if you if you have wounds. Medjugorje is the place to get deep inner healing. Our Lady here in the back, she's waiting for you. She's in love with us, as Jesus is in love with us. And see, he has been patient for 20 years. I did the sexual writings and stuff, wrong stuff. But they are patient. God is patient. They just wait. They wait for you, you know. And come to Medjugorje, experience this special place where literally heaven is touching earth. And um, yeah, God bless you all. Come to Medjugorje. I'm praying for you who are watching this video and be sure the healing is coming. Keep constant, constantly start praying for that healing and it will come. As a friend of mine said, you know, I want to return from Medjugorje after, you know, I had this tear on the mountain. And I came until, I heard a voice when I was in the, in the hotel room and, and the voice said, if you want to go to paradise, you have to have a, make a st leap, a step in faith. And I said, no, 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 I'm going back to my old life. And the client didn't pay. And I'm, in, I'm going to be in Bosnia and what am I going to do? And I, God is patient. He let me go. I took the bus to Split. As a good German, I told God, I, I prepared everything. I got my bus ticket online. I took the bus. I went to Split. I went to Rome, cheap flight, overnight Rome. And then in Rome... I felt, my God, what did I do? I left the spiritual clinic and I have a spiritual heart operation. And um, I left the clinic. I was 
totally in shock. So you see, God is patient. He let me go to Rome. And then in Rome, I felt like if I'm going back to Barcelona, I'm going to be like in darkness. You know, I felt pure darkness. So, so I, um, but the next day, the <laughs> flight back to Barcelona was the next day. In the morning, I said, no, 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 I'm going back to Barcelona, all these thoughts. So I tried to check in online into Ryanair and remember that well, as well as an advice. You have to check online into Ryanair, get the boarding pass. If you don't have the boarding pass, I thought I couldn't check in online. I went to the airport and thought I go to the counter and I will check in. You have to pay 55 euros if you want to check in and at the counter in, in Rome, in, 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 for a Ryanair flight. In, in my case, it was in Rome. And I had 13 euros left to take the, the, the train back to my home place in Barcelona. And the lady said, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. I don't have the money. She said, you can't take the flight. At that moment, a friend, a charismatic friend from India wrote me. He didn't know about the situation and said, Thomas, old life is finished. You have yearned for God so long. Now new life will begin. No turning back. I was amazed. I was sitting now in Rome for three hours praying at the, at the airport and I said, Dear God, what do you want of me? He took me to the airport chapel. A friend of mine said, How could did, heck did you find that airport chapel? It's so hard to find. I was in there. It was a safe place. I cried out to God and said, God, what do you want of me? I was tired after three hours. You know, it's stress. You're stranded in Rome. And I heard a little voice. The Holy Spirit said, Look to your bank account on the mobile phone. There's the money of a client now. Go buy a ticket back to Medjugorje and go to Medjugorje. I looked at the bank account, the money was there. I flew back to Medjugorje. In the evening I was in Medjugorje and I never left Medjugorje. I'm still here and I'm doing this video for you now to tell you, you know, also God allows your will to a certain point and then he does corrections. Sometimes it's painful. I was exhausted two weeks. I was sick afterwards, but I'm happy to be in Medjugorje. I'm happy that God took me back. And sometimes these corrections are a bit painful, but be open and always content with every situation in your life. As um, Our Lady talked to the little Arab Miriam from Bethlehem, always that's the secret. Be content with every situation in your life. Everything from God is for the good. So I wish you all the best for Metrogoya, God's blessing for Metrogoya, and I'm going to pray for all of you. Have a blessed and good day.